Kyle with VOD TV. We're at Parks Associates Connections Conference at CTA. We're with Brett Sampington of uh, Parks Associates. Mm -hmm. Brett, you're uh, looking at the personal cloud. In fact, mm -hmm. you, ha you had a panel that you moderated the other day. First, why don't you tell us you know, what the personal cloud is? Well, you know, that's a, that's an interesting question because it's actually changing. When we first started looking at the personal cloud, it was all around storage. So Dropbox and a number of those other types of companies, it was a matter of how much capacity and for what price you get online. But if you look today at the personal cloud, uh, it's interesting that what really sells those services is not so much how much storage you get, but what are the other things that come with it? So synchronization being able to share content with other people, uh, being able to consume, store content online and then have it streamed to you. So a lot of those areas are really what sells those services. So it's about the functionality. And so one of the things we see in the personal cloud today is it really has evolved, Func uh, storage is just one more function. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as we look at the personal cloud and how it's evolving, today we're really looking more at the functional side of the personal cloud rather than just the storage. And so as part of that, the applications that go with, with it? Yeah, the applications is clearly part of that. And in fact, uh, cloud-based applications has, has really joined in with all of the storage and all of the other parts of the personal cloud. If you look at the personal cloud today, it's less about that. It's m about storage, as I said. Mm -hmm. It's more about what do you have rights to online? What type of content do you have online? Uh, if you talk to companies, a number of companies that have cloud-based services, they'll say, oh yes, we store information about the consumer and about their use and personalize services uh, based on that information. Then you ask them, well, who owns that mm -hmm. information? And they'll always say, well, the consumer owns that information. So essentially for you and I, we have repositories of data that we own that are out there in the cloud. And what we're going to see in the future is how different services access that information to be able to provide unique value to us in a way that, that we couldn't before. Well, and that's interesting. Um, if we own it, then we should be able to export it to other services as we want and uh, at least be able to retain it for our own and, and then delete it off those clouds. Is, is there kind of a standard definition of what ownership means? Uh, that's, that's a great question because if you talk to companies, they'll say the consumer owns it, but then if you ask, well, can the consumer delete that information or let a competitor use that information, uh, you don't get a very clear answer on a lot of that. So, uh, so there's a lot left to be done in terms of rights, privacy, security of that information, and how it's used and accessed in the future. From a consumer standpoint, are you seeing them asking these kinds of questions? And if so, are there, you know, do they have a little reluctance to, to kind of join these services? Um, there is some reluctance among consumers to trust, to voluntarily put information online and to trust that information online. And also, uh, if you ask consumers about the personal information about usage and things like that online, uh, they're very hesitant about sharing that information or making it available to others. Uh, so there's a, in the personal cloud and with all of the, this data out there, uh, th those are some issues that, that uh, are going to have to be overcome for consumers in mass to begin to adopt these services. One of the things that I see um, all the time is, you know, a single kind of sign-on authentication through maybe some of the social media services, you know, to get to some of these other services makes it real convenient. But at the same time, you know, does the consumer realize, you know, what they're giving up in terms of that privacy and, and so forth? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because if you look at security and authentication, every layer of security you add makes it more difficult to use that service. Yeah. So all of these companies are having to balance uh, both sides of the equation. How do I make it easy and how do I make it secure? Are you seeing any good solutions in that realm? I mean, were any brought up in your discussion and then your panel? Um, there are some, some unique approaches. Uh, there are some, in fact, there are a number of companies evolving today uh, that offer uh, storage of personal information online in a secure way to then be able to fill out online forms, uh, to be able to have that information available for consumers to access remotely. Uh, there are only a few of those, though. And one of the things that we see, we think that uh, a lot of those companies are ultimately going to be absorbed by 
companies that that use that information are, are verticals that uh, use that authentication. Uh, there are a number of things going on in authentication today, uh, a lot of problems to be overcome, and a number of companies that really have a vested interest in finding answers. I would imagine a big part of it's going to come down to trust too. I mean, if you're a startup, it's hard to have that established trust with the general public. Uh, if you're a company that's been around for a long time that has uh, a proven track record, there's got to be something there, right? As far as you know, long term in the brand and so forth. Sure, uh, trust is a is a critical factor. Uh, I may trust my bank more than I trust my broadband operator. I may trust my broadband operator more than I trust some website that I just happen to find online. So. Yeah, Yes, trust is, is a big part of that. Uh, and as consumers begin to consider how much they're going to be involved in uh, online services, uh, that trust factor is going to be key in terms of generating revenue. So we're talking a lot about the cloud itself, but what about kind of these hybrid devices where the cloud exists within the home and then outside the home? Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. On my panel, uh, we had Western Digital. Western Digital, a maker of uh, storage equipment. There are a number of companies that deal with storage CE devices, NAS devices, other types of, of storage hardware. One of the points that, uh, that Western Digital made on this panel is that many consumers, I think 60% or more of consumers, have real concerns about having their content uh, online or storing their content online, and so they want to have it in home. And so what they're doing in their messaging uh, and in how they present their products to consumers, they're really emphasizing having this device lets you have it safe at home but then allows you to access that content remotely. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the angle that they're taking on the marketplace. Interesting, and I guess the other part of it, I mean, I actually have one of those devices and I figured out how to use it, but the question is, um, you know, it, it, what about the average consumer? Uh, are they adopting this kind of thing or is it still kind of uh, a little bit beyond most consumers? Uh, that is a, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's an important aspect and it's one that the CE makers and the cloud companies are having to deal with is the user interface. Storing and backing up information uh, is traditionally been an IT-based function and uh, I don't know about in your home but in my home uh, we don't have many IT experts in my home uh, though some of the teenagers think that they are <laughs> um, so as part of that many of these companies are having to develop interfaces that are more user-friendly drag-and-drop use uh, m dealing with uh, accidental duplication yeah. of content yeah. and consolidating all of that making it easier for users to do that uh, if you think about setting permissions you may want certain people to access certain content. That could be a very difficult thing to go set that up for every person and for every file. So a lot of the focus uh, among these companies is how do I simplify that interface and make it user friendly so that it's approachable by all consumers. Yeah, it's amazing. It just seems like, and uh, you know, as things get better and simpler at the same time they get more complex and more opportunities and and it just the it, the analysts uh, like yourself are going to keep busy for a long time aren't you <laughs> oh absolutely and honestly that's the genius of companies like apple and others that figure out how to make it approachable by consumers and as long as there's change there's something else for us to study excellent well the brett always great catching up right thank, thank you. you so much out of the focus